is 23rd December 2019 practically 1 am in the morning so 7 to 8 days from now we would make a habit of writing 2020 and I'm sure to me this habit will take at least few days because it always happens that whenever new year change I am still writing the old year I'm not very well versed with that you know Today we are going to discuss about how 2020 would look like. But our vision of 2020 is very big henceforth. In this video we would only be covering about the first part. Actually it would be three part. Part A, Part B and then Part C which is the concluding part. So today we are shooting the first part. If you want we can have a one video wherein we can have part A, part B and then part C but it would be very long so more than one hour video so we want it to be have a single video you know uh, th uh, divided into three parts before starting I feel that 2020 would definitely be a year of carnage I would say it would be a year of make and break in 2020 all those companies those who survive they will survive till the longest probably i feel that if you survive in 2020 then you would be able to survive probably another five to ten years down the line that is guaranteed having said that if you not been able to survive in 2020 then it would next to impossible for you to come back in the business i treat that 2020 would be defined as the two names according to me the first would be the this would be the year of technology that I'm damn sure in this year technology will definitely rule the show and apart from technology you know one thing which would also rule in 2020 is the carnage yes I am a right which is carnage carnage oblique destruction in English the meaning of carnage means that destruction in 2020, huge carnage will happen. I don't want you to name, but few big corporates worldwide will collapse. That's for sure. On the contrary, few big corporates would come up. That is also sure. So I see that 2020 would be year of carnage and also the year of technology. Having said that, 2020 would be a year when people who have a very high functional competent knowledge they are pretty good in functional competency and they believe that rather than doing valuation valuation game just like Vijay Shekhar Sharma, Lens Card, uh, Bhavesh Agarwal and Nitesh Agarwal if we uh, basically do the, the functional functional game the knowledge knowledge game we would be successful now before starting my vision on 2020, I would like to give an indemnification that first of all again repeat that this is part 1. So do not summarize after part 1. Summarization will happen in part 3. Secondly, this is the opinion of Treasury Consulting Group. Treasury Consulting, none of the clients of Treasury Consulting, international, Singaporean or any clients, American clients, it is not their opinion at some places it is my personal opinion so wherever it would be my personal opinion rather than treasury consulting opinion i will come and say that it is my personal opinion but overall it is treasury consulting opinion and none of the clients of treasury consulting will take any responsibility of of opinion now i feel that this is how the 2020 would look like you know so for me I have divided 2020 into various parts like in the first part we divided banking, technology, governments which is known as the uh, geopolitical situations also and fourth is the venture capitalist you know in the se second phase we would be taking this further now let's start with banking we feel that in 2020 more than 2 million jobs in the banking sector would go that is a fact more than 2 million jobs in the banking sector would go 
and eventually the banking sector of the globe will collapse. Collapse in the sense like it will collapse in terms of job losses. So we as a company believe that in 2020, after every 10 jobs which will go in the banking sector, hardly one or two would come. It might be possible that out of 50, one would come. Because one thing which is clearly evident and apparent, only an idiot with zero IQ can ignore that, that in the last three years, if I don't have the data of how many jobs added, but in the last three years, the banks lost, shed more jobs than they gave more jobs to the people. Like in the last few months itself, from Credit Suisse, JP Morgan, Goldman, HSBC, now Commerce Bank, and list is very long, everyone is firing. And they are not firing in 100, 200, 300, they are firing in thousands. Like HSBC is firing 10,000 people. And the informal news suggests that, basically in the interbank market, suggests that it's not 10,000, it is over 15 to 20,000 people because the new person, Amir, who is going to join as a CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Treasury Consult of HSBC, he really wanted to control that position. And to control that position, he needs to show high-end profitability to the HSBC, to the people, to the investors. So I feel that the heads of the banks, JP Morgan, Standard Chartered, HSBC, UBS, Barclays, City, ANZ and all, they would continue to focus on shareholder wells rather than the investors or the general public. We feel that in 2020, these big boys, they do, they, they know, they do not have any worry as far as the jobs are concerned, as far as the unemployment is concerned, as far as the, the you know, how much jobs the bank is giving is concerned. They would be focusing upon their bonus. Having said that, we feel that in 2020, the bonuses, the cap basically would be more stringent from regulators. It is already getting stringent, so it won't be very conducive in that front. We feel that Australian banking sector will collapse completely in 2020 and this collapse will start from Westpac and eventually all the four guys, which is Westpac, ANZ, uh, Commonwealth Bank of Australia and National Australia Bank along with Macquarie, they all will enter into this loop and this carnage would be very big. We believe that in 2020, Australian banks, 2020 would be last nail in the coffin for Australian banks. And many more scandals which Australian banks actually did before 2020 will come at the top on the surface and worldwide people get to know that this is also what Australian bank thing did, which we used to believe that cannot happen. You know, so as for Australian bank, it would be do or die here. That I'm damn sure. This is something which we need to remember very clearly. Of course, for Indian banking, it would be again do or die here. But we believe that Indian banking will not collapse, rather it will move toward consolidation. We believe that Indian government, who is very hungry for money, who do not have money and rather we believe that uh, government can do anything for money. So government will sell few public sector banks or they will consolidate public sector banks. We also emphasize that government of India might sell strategic stakes in public sector concerns to foreign banks as well. It might be possible without quoting the name of a big corporate in India, you know to whom I'm talking. They might enter. They they all. They might also enter into the banking sector, which will lead to the collapse of the banking sector in in India. So for India, it definitely won't be a conducive year 2020 as far as banking is concerned. Uh, we see either of the way we see consolidation, either we see sell off, individual sell off, or we see buyout from foreign banks. The probability of consolidation, according to me, is more higher, and uh, than all these. We see that the front office and the wealth management desk of the banks worldwide will definitely shut down and they would be taken care by robots. We already know that DBS, Standard Chartered, UBS, Barclays, Goldman, Goldman publicly said that 
they are bringing a robo which would may which would be conducive to even retail investors this is the first time i have heard from goldman that they are worried about retail investors goldman has never worried about retail investors they always worried about institutional investors i am a pro goldman person but still i say that goldman as an independent investment bank and i i definitely never treat goldman as an investment bank i treat them as a full bank so goldman never worried about from retail investor but the time they came in the public domain and said that their robo would definitely be for retail investor also this raised the eyebrows at least for me so front office guy who are already losing because robos at you know just like take an example in 2019 because the memories of the people are very short we forget it that jp morgan chase did around 250 billion which is roughly 1/10 of the gdp of india approximately goldman jp morgan did around 250 billion dollar worth of ndf non deliverable forward trades only by algo so algo trading will definitely pick up that's for sure as far as the front office is concerned and wealth management is concerned as a company we feel that in wealth management the algo or the high frequency trading would take up more than eventually in the other slowly it will come in the front office middle office i say it would be secure in 2020 but very difficult to say in 2021 at least i say that for the time being 2020 middle office is secure that's something my feeling is all about i think that the big banks will move towards technology that's for sure and they left with only two option either they can do in house or they can join hands with the startup I feel that the big boys like JP Morgan, Goldman, UBS, Bank of America and all they would be in house that's for sure while other they would join the hands and they would take the uh, assistance from startups I am not saying that all these big boys will be 100% in house like if you would have carefully noticed that in the fag end of 2019 in english the meaning of fag end means the last uh, i would say 3 to 4 months in the last 3 to 4 months of 2019 goldman sachs venture funds is taking very aggressive position in india they are investing standalone or with their partners in the indian startups they are giving a clear message to the public is that we wanted to invest our money or their investors money in a startup so that it would be a win win situation for goldman and also for the startup and probably for the investor as well Now we see that uh, JP Morgan and Goldman would continue to lead number 1 number 2 very difficult to tell who would be number 1 who would be number 2 but more or less they are at par we feel that both Goldman and JP Morgan would continue to be a leading technology uh, continue to invest heavily in technology the limited information in the public domain suggests that JP Morgan information technology budget is not less than 10 billion dollars for the year 10 billion dollar is a huge amount and goldman is also not far from that number but eventually in 2000 to 2020 it would be either goldman or jp morgan but it's not much difference so both will act as a not a gatekeeper but as a leader as far as the technological spending is concerned well regulatory part would be more complex in 2020 i'm damn sure regulator would be having a danda in 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 in, in his hand and in 2020 we are expecting ma610 monetary authority of singapore 610 risk aggregation and statistics reporting we expecting more talks on frtb all the frtb coming in 2021 we are expecting uh, fundamental review the trading book must talk we we will heard about psd we heard about payment gateways we will heard about uh, you know i would say pra prudential regulatory authority we talk about uh, anti money laundering transaction amld and anti money laundering directive actually and it's so many thing so on a rec tech front rec front i feel that rec front would be very aggressive and i feel that regulator would definitely be aggressive as far as the rec front is concerned but having said that having said that we strongly believe we strongly believe that the tech part of that rec would continue to miss complete 2020 like i don't know how many of you be how many of you been to singapore fintech festival 
even if I take Singapore Fintech Festival of 2018 also. In Singapore Fintech Festival 2018 and also 2019, one thing which we not saw clearly apparently is that no vendor came in the public domain and said I have Rectech solution. Lot of payment companies, Bitcoin companies, Hyperledger companies, lot of companies there but no one came in the public domain and said that I have a solution for Rectech. Even in the countries like Singapore, with no offense, the Rectech solution is all about, all about KYC or anti-money laundering. And I'm still not convinced till what extent this tech will resolve in KYC and anti-money laundering. And then I was surprised to know that in 2019 with MAS, Monetary Authority of Singapore along with other bodies, those who conducted uh, FinTech Festival concludes that they got around 60,000 plus visitors, right, including delegates and they got around 900 plus exhibitors. I was failed to understand that at least four people, those who offer in the RecTech solution. So Rec piece would be complicated, no doubt about that. But the tech piece, we presume that the tech piece would completely be missed, completely be missing in 2020. But I would continue to work on tech piece, PC. We will see that banks will collapse in Southeast Asia region. We feel that, like I said, that at least one or two banks will collapse. Non-banking financial corporation will continue to collapse in India. We feel that small SSBs, small scheduled commercial banks, they will default. And we feel that, without quoting the name, we, we, we feel that at least one G7 bank will collapse in 2020. I don't want you to name that G7 bank, but we feel that this European bank will definitely collapse in 2020. But that doesn't mean that China and uh, it would be tough for Chinese banks also to have their stand in 2020 because it won't be very easy here for them. But having said that, we need to see that till what extent the government, the Chinese government and the regulator People Bank of China, PBOC, is convinced to invest another round of funding in the bank. We'll have a separate talk on virtual banking in the part B. So we are not touching virtual banking in that. Even though most of you know that Treasury Consulting is filing for a virtual banking license in Singapore. Eventually we feel that banks will continue to spend up. Uh, we feel that the jobs will go in the banking sector to the tune of $2 million. Automation will take up. The robo advisory will surely take up. The front office and the wealth management piece would get major hit. To conclude, big banks will move towards technology. And sitting today, very difficult to justify who would win, Goldman or JP, but minor 5-10% difference, both would be on almost on the, on the same time, on the same size, in the same league. Well, rec piece would be more complicated, but tech, tech, tech piece, technology piece, which I feel would continue to miss. Uh, on the contrary, we feel that banking collapse will continue to happen. India will face, India will have their own share of banking collapse. Southeast Asian region will not be, I would say, uh, exception in banking collapse. But we feel that one G7 bank, top bank, will also collapse in 2009, 2020. This is our outlook for 2020. We don't think that outlook is very rosy for most of the people. But we never make videos to make people happy. This is our outlook and we feel that this, this is what we, this is how banking would be. Having said that, 2020 would bring a lot of opportunity in the banking sector. As more technology will come in, banks will need the people, those who have technological plus functional understanding of that subject. So example, you know how non-deliverable forward work. Okay, many people know that. I also know. I have several videos. But how many know how, the, how to do accounting of non-deliverable forwards? If 100 people know how non-deliverable forward works on Reuters or Bloomberg, out of 100, how many know how is how actually the accounting happens? 60? Out of this 60, how many actually know how to implement this in treasury management systems? Could be Munich, Calypso or prop systems. Prop system is the systems created by the company, in-house systems where they have their own IP, intellectual property. I don't think two or three. Out of two or three, how many of them actually can done the accounting on the ground? One. 
2020 would be the year when bank wants their employee to know everything in the cycle, whole cycle. Rather than banks want their employee only to know one cycle. So 2020, if on the one side bring a lot of challenges for the banks, on the other hand, it will bring many opportunities for bank for employees also. But we need to work very hard. It won't be very easy. This is our outlook on banking for 2020. In the second outlook, we cover technology. We feel that all the big boys, Google, Microsoft, Amazon and Alibaba, they would continue to invest heavily in technology, especially cloud computing. The recent tug of war between Alibaba and Microsoft regarding around $10 billion worth of cloud contract by Pentagon would definitely end up in a court. I think it has already started in the court and few negative could be unprofessional words would be exchanged between two companies but we really need to see how it would happen american elections would always have some reflection on these companies because they for all for our american companies i have deliberately not mentioned about facebook we will mention about facebook separately in that don't think we forget facebook but at the same point of time we feel that it would be very difficult year for google in 2020 because Sundar Pachai would take over as a CEO of Alphabet which is the, which is none of the, which is nothing but the parent company of the Google and the day Sundar Pachai is the CEO of the Google not the main parent company which is Alphabet uh, you know the employees of the Google are not very happy from him rather some unconfirmed news suggests that it was employees who do not want Google to bid for this Pentagon contract. But I don't know the much reality about that because I don't work in the Google. I'm telling you what's coming in the public domain. I'm also not very conducive on Sundar Pichai and I feel that 2020 might be a good year for Google in technological front, but the budget would always be a constraint. Their majority projects that is currently uh, running, if they are under losses and some projects are behind schedules, Employee engagement is definitely, definitely, is, would definitely be an issue for Google in 2020. And we feel that, that all three, Microsoft, Amazon and Alibaba, they would rule better, I think much better in employee engagement compared to Google. So Google will lose competitiveness in 2020, we feel, and we feel that many people, you know, from few big names without putting the name in the Google would quit and they might join their rivals like Apple, probably Facebook and few more. Well, Google experience of coming in the banking domain with the setup with the, with the uh, merger possible uh, professional relationship or a venture with Citi would seriously be uh, something we cannot ignore. Well, employee engagement is one thing, funding is one thing, but one good thing Google always have, and credit goes to the founders of the Google who can now step down, is the technology. If Google will come with City as a venture in a technology uh, venture in a virtual banking space in the US, then it would be hats off. But having said that, we need to see how early and fast Google would be able to monetize that because it will definitely not be easy for Google. That, that that's for sure. But we really need to keep our finger crossed and hope that uh, Google will work in, an, in, a, in a very effective way. You know, more importantly, we should not forget that in the last several years, Google not only lost heavily in their um, some ambitious projects which are in public domain, also Google lost in terms of regulatory fine also. I'm not saying Facebook not lost it, but uh, Google also lost as well. While this regulatory fine not imposed on Microsoft, Alibaba and Amazon. So Google and Facebook remains an epicenter on the regulatory fine. Plus you should not forget that a lot of talks being raised about the Google search engine capability, search engine results. Without quoting the name, many firms came in public domain and said that Google made their search engine in such a way they don't let their, their somebody's product without putting the name on the top, rather it deserves to be on the top. So very difficult to tell. We feel that banking trade cycles to shrink and that should happen. Cloud compounding will take more like State Stream, a lot of other companies will come forward, custodians come forward and the trade cycles will reduce. 
and all these four big boys which is google amazon uh, google amazon microsoft and alibaba they would definitely leave the show we feel that it and ites companies worldwide information technology and information technology enabled services company worldwide will shed the job due to digitization and that is something which is happening we feel that cognizant who is already cutting the jobs infosys scl wipro and everybody cutting the jobs we know but credit goes to our media who is not telling about that we feel that all these companies will continue to cut the job and most disaster impact would come on the information technology enabled services which is ites companies then it companies so if the impact would be one dollar on it company the impact would be seven to eight dollar on ites companies remember that very carefully so it and ites company will continue to shed the job and in our last video we already told you that if you would have noticed the it and ites companies of india they have stopped giving tcv which is total contract value because you know that now the the idiosity is known to the people and worldwide people got to know that the, the funda of tcv you are using is actually not correct it's not wrong it's not right funda so i think that tcv would surely be phased out soon but having said that singapore will continue to lead the world singapore will continue to be a hot cake in southeast asia blockchain bitcoin internet of things virtual reality and hardcore enhancements enhancements in the hardcore will continue we feel that singapore would definitely lead as far as the blockchain and uh, bitcoin and cryptocurrency fintechs are concerned singapore grip on the payment system would continue and the virtual banking licenses with singapore is is signing or giving and the wholesale banking licensing would further take the take the position more enhanced but only time would sell overall we see that it would be a technology year but we are not very conducive to google while we are very conducive to microsoft we conducive to alibaba we conducive to you know the third person amazon we feel that amazon will lead the way amazon e-commerce business and the technology in their e-commerce business would continue to flourish while google may do few good things but eventually they not been able to gain much momentum in 2020 on the contrary we feel that google experience of coming in the virtual banking with the city is something very important and must see event cannot miss event having said that it won't be very easy because virtual banking is not easy there is no standard pattern which i have which i copy and paste and give to the people so that is something we need to see Having said that, the bank's trade cycle will continue to shrink. All these four big boys will continue to give a lot of cloud computing solution. That is also. Hats off. IT and IT ESI sector, who is already pushing towards digitization, will push towards more digitization. And job losses would continue because the client want to get this work in less cost. And technology is definitely ready for that. This is our opinion about uh, the technology sector. Third is the geopolitical. We have kept very important point for geopolitical because if I start speak about geopolitical, then it's roughly 1.30. It's already 30 minutes to the video. Then throughout the night, I need to shoot. We feel that this time, US-China trade war would continue. Phase one deal is being signed till what? till what level it would be effective at least for me it is difficult having said that us elections and brexit are the two important thing which we need to learn which we need to see we don't know who will win in us election the reason is that everybody used to believe that trump will win but at the last moment the impeachment happened in the senate and now i don't know till what uh, till what extent the impeachment will go but i'm sure impeachment will go this would definitely tarnish the Trump image. While Trump is the business pro leader, we all know. American economy is growing, we all know. Jobs are coming, we know. Um, uh, Trump is a business pro and our corporates are, fl are flourishing, we all know. But this impeachment is not good for Trump. And till what extent it would save Trump and his party, we need to see. But having said that, US-China trade war will continue even if Trump will not come in 2020. The only thing we need to see is the shape, size and magnitude. I repeat, 
the shape, size and magnitude will differ. The, you know, US-China trade war even existed when Donald Trump was not there. In fact, nobody imagined that Donald Trump would come, to be honest. But even if in, when, when Donald Trump was not there, the trade war was there. And the only thing Donald Trump did, as far as the trade war is concerned, he made it less nice. He made it, he made this war legal. While Obama, Bush and earlier administration not accepted it and not made it legal because they were not having the courage to make it legal. While Trump being a business person is definitely because every business person having a courage. So he is having a courage. He came forward and made it legitimate. But if Trump don't come till what extent the next administration will make it legitimate, we need to see. Having said that, China is on the little lower side of this tug of war. We have seen that China is, is pushing US more than US will push to China about the amendment or about the, the phase one of the, of the trade war. And whereby the public information is that the China will buy not less than 50 billion. It's a big money. Will not buy less than 50 billion worth of the US farm products. So I would like to congratulate Trump for that. In all these struggle balls, Singapore will definitely face a heat. Singapore elections are also due somewhere in 2020. We feel that PAP will again come back and we welcome in advance the Deputy Prime Minister Hang, who would definitely be the Prime Minister of the country. Being from the finance background and a wonderful person, having experience as Monetary Authority of Singapore and and a very nice gentleman, reachable person, we feel that he would definitely take Singapore to the higher and he would continue to make legacy left by Sir Lee Kuan Yew, the Prime Minister Lee and now Prime Minister Hang. But it won't be very easy for him because the circumstances would change. The ground under him will not be very conducive. He needs to strive for that. But I'm damn sure the leadership quality left by Sir Lee Kuan Yew, Prime Minister Lee and will definitely take up and he takes Singapore to the higher extent. I'm sure about that. His subordinates, I hope, we hope that Monetary Authority of Singapore along will continue to maintain the momentum as a most innovative regulator of the globe and Singapore would continue to be a leading fintech player in Southeast Asia that I'm damn sure. Well, we feel that the profitability would definitely be a concern in Southeast Asia. Majority of the countries of the Southeast Asia might not be able to maintain the tag of profitability. Like this is Singapore FinTech Festival. You know, just somebody asked me why you wear this jacket. I love Singapore. When I wear this jacket, I feel there is a lot to do in the life. Whenever I wear a jacket where there is a Singapore, I feel that there is a lot to do in the life. That's why I wear this jacket. Anyways. Somebody asked why I told you. We feel that profitability would definitely be a concern in Southeast Asia. Uh, and uh, we, many companies would, won't be profitable. And this will create a mess up. We feel that uh, eventually, you know, uh, all profitable company would be enticed by everybody. So Dubai will entice the profitable company. Saudi government will entice the profitable company. Uh, multiple governments. Of course, Singapore would, would always be a hub and would continue to be a hub in Southeast Asia. So they would continue to entice the profitability. You know, so that would be very difficult. Having said that, all the profitable companies like us would have a wonderful 2020 because we will get a lot of invitations from international governments. Uh, on this part, in a geopolitical front, front we are not very conducive, but we feel that the government will do heavily social spending worldwide. Even Singapore government is currently doing social spending and that too at a very high level, to be honest. We feel that governments will continue to do, do the social spending and no government would be an exception in that regards. Unfortunately, Singapore will definitely not be an exception this time. Since they continue to do a lot of social spending, the two fundamental questions will come. Singapore is a cash rich, is a cash rich uh, I would say, government, we all know. But one important thing would come, not all governments are cash rich. So the governments who run the trade deficit from where they get the money, that's more important. And we need to see that. But social spending to continue. 
geopolitical issues will continue just like Saudi Iran issue we have recently saw India Pakistan will continue the US budgetary funding to Syria Afghanistan we seriously need to see it would have an impact on the US budget like Donald Trump is very clear government will not fund any Afghanistan related budget and he has already pulled US out, out, out from Syria because he is very clear that if he continue to spend money on all these things he don't left with money on on the main thing which for which the government needs Brexit and Trump, Trump re-election would definitely be two important outliers for me in 2020 and they are not natural outliers they would be non-natural outliers to be honest we feel that if Trump will get impeached so there are two scenarios number one in fact four so the first scenario is Trump will get re-elected no impeachment basically no result will come Trump will get re-elected no impeachment Trump will get re-elected impeachment Trump will not get re-elected no impeachment Trump will not get re-elected and impeachment and if this would happen it would be mess I'm telling you it would be mess there are only two mess scene which we projected number one Trump will get re-elected and he would impeach heavily and Trump will not get re-elected and he would impeach so I don't know what would happen because now Senate will take up a call the facts of the matter is before Senate government of United States will take up a call I don't know whether it would happen or not but these two scenarios looks very dangerous apart from that we strongly feel that with due respect that Japanese government will collapse in 2020 yes you heard right we we going to have separate video about Japanese government budget but we feel that Japanese government will collapse in 2020 and in 2020 Japanese government would be heavily heavily that government and Japanese government is already a government who who already have over 200 percent of debt to GDP ratio I don't know till bit till what extent this 200 percent figure is correct to be honest but the collapse of Japanese government is imminent in 2020 that's for sure which would trigger a wave across the globe all currencies will get impacted don't worry the outlook for currencies we share the next week much before 2020 we feel that several European countries will collapse due to their own financial position and impact of Brexit. And we feel that Greece and PICS, Portugal, Italy, Ireland and all, they would continue to lead the show. To eventually to sum up, we feel that Southeast Asia will face the heat and Singapore will not an exception. US-China trade war will continue to tug if Trump will not get elected. The only thing is shape, size and magnitude. I repeat, shape, size and magnitude, we need to see how it would come up. We don't know. Importantly, we would have less profitable companies worldwide, what we have today. So all Southeast Asian company will come and they invite these profitable companies. Saudi Arabian government would be an exception in 2020. And I feel that under the leadership of Prince Mohammed bin Salim, the way he handled Saudi and the way he... Uh, I would say basically may, uh, collected around 26.5 billion dollars in the initial public offer of Aramco which is now over 2 trillion dollar company around 100% more than Apple we feel that uh, that the Saudi would be definitely an outlier in 2020 on a positive sense not on a negative sense so the Iran tension will continue India Pakistan will continue Trump Syria Afghanistan will continue well, Trump re-election along with impeachment and Brexit would be an impact. Boris Johnson is an idiot, we all know. We feel that Japanese government will collapse in 2020, which would trigger a wave in 2020. Several, like several European countries to collapse because of poor fiscal situation and the result of Brexit. This is our look for the geopolitical situation. The fourth and the last, we feel that uh, the SoftBank will definitely not, don't, not collapse in 2020, but the cracks would be more apparent in, in, in SoftBank. Like in 2017, when I was talking about that SoftBank not doing good thing and SoftBank will collapse, no one wanted to heard about it. But today everyone is listening because the cracks are very very apparent. We feel that in 2020 the cracks would be more apparent like a volcano. I am not a geologist, neither I am a scientist. 
But whatever I heard in the Discovery Channel, as in when I get time, suggests that whenever a volcano is about to burst, the cracks become more apparent and uh, based upon various statistical or the various tests or the tools these uh, geologists have, they got to know that say 30 minutes, 40 minutes or whatever time left for a volcano to burst. Similarly, we feel that SoftBank will burst in 2021 to 22, but cracks would be more apparent and we feel that soft, SoftBank to be replaced by either of three, which is BlackRock, Blackstone or Brookfield. In fact, four, KKR. We feel that eventually by the time 2020 would end, which is somewhere in December, SoftBank would be replaced by Blackstone, BlackRock, Brookfield and probably KKR. But we do not know who would be one who would be replacing. It all depends, depends how much money they can raise and how much profitability that can generate. If you take my independent opinion, like I said, if you take my independent opinion, then it would be BlackRock. That would be replacing the uh, SoftBank in 2020. Venture capitalist funding will get down and that is something which is happening even. If you are a regular uh, reader of a business newspaper, you would got to know that. To be honest, that now even good boys like Sequoia and all, they are working 5 million to 6 million checks. Previously, they used to give check of 20, 30 million like that, to be honest. Thousands of jobs will go, startups would collapse, but it will not come in media, rest assured. On the contrary, the negative interest rate policy, when we talk about our FX outlook for 2020, we talk about negative interest rate policy, but the negative interest rate policy will push sovereign wealth funds to invest heavily in the carry currency, just like Indian rupee. Having said that, all these carry currencies, there are four carry currencies we have worldwide, Indian rupee, Philippines peso, Singapore dollar and Australian dollar. We really need to see how the central banks of all four, Reserve Bank and all, they will continue to maintain the momentum. If they don't not been able to maintain the momentum, they will not get the money of Sovereign Wealth Fund. We have already saw that Singapore GIC, Singapore Sovereign Wealth Fund, GIC, it's investing heavily in India. Like yesterday or day before yesterday, DLF said that they are going to be taking their rental business more aggressive and they are going to forming a kind of joint venture with GIC. We feel that in 2020 would be very conducive year for Brookfield. Brookfield will get a lot of real estate assets. Having said that, technology will not be the only funding instrument for, for venture capitalists in 2020. Few more fancy names which would come just like Agritech, just like EgTech, Educational Technology. Few fancy names are bound to come, but we feel that 2020 will not be a good year for venture capitalists. The number of deals will definitely come down, the volume will come down, startups will wind up, job losses will happen, just like OYO. Guys, do you know that OYO, Ritesh Agarwal is a, I have no words because there are many female who would be watching this video. Ritesh Agarwal is asking around 2000 people, 2000 people to step down from OYO. If you are a $10 billion company, you are asking over 2,000 people to step down from your organization. Hey, these are our contradictory signals, right? One side, you're claiming to be a over $10 billion company. You want, uh, today we got a news that they wanted to make a huge in, uh, business in Rajasthan and all. You went to Mexico and everywhere, but you're asking around 2,000 people to step down. These are contradictory sig signals. We feel that it would be 2020 would be more fancy, just like I can envisage Agritech, EgTech, InsureTech, and all those things. But definitely not a conducive year for SoftBank and uh, for venture capitalists also, it would definitely not be a conducive year. This was our focus for 2018, wherein we discussed about technology, we discussed about banking, we discussed about uh, uh, geopolitical, we discussed about venture capitalists. In the next part, we discussed more about virtual banking and all, and third part, we would conclude that. Apparently, we would like to conclude our video, which is that part A, that 2020 would not be a conducive year for many, due to multiple reasons, as stated by our video. But 2020 would definitely be a conducive year for most of the people, those who are functionally competent. 
because at the end of 2020 you would remember my word that it would be it would continue to remember a year whereby a lot of valuation valuation people just like Vijay Shekhar Sharma will lose rather the functionally competent people will gain but eventually we need to see how it shape up but remember that if you are doing a good job you are a functionally competent person then 2020 have many positives in his back for you have a good time you know our mobile number which is plus nine one nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight you know our fixed income platform www.fixedincome.global and before closing do not forget that treasury consulting started selling derivative contracts on amazon you open amazon.com i repeat amazon.com 12 different marketplaces by Amazon just like Denmark, Netherlands, Canada, Australia, Italy and all different 12 India wherein we are selling our products. So if I add Amazon.com plus 12 other Amazon platforms on 13 different platform the derivatives sold by Tarashi Consulting is live. You can buy that. Have a great time. Talk soon.